Coming up, strong storms and tornadoes pound parts of Georgia, leaving a path of destruction. Then, on a lighter note, if the Incredible Hulk needed a locomotive, this is what he'd want. Just don't make it angry. Plus, believe it or not, this piece of Norfolk Southern history is still on the rails today. And guess who the military calls when it needs a whole lot of heavy metal moved? All that and more is next. Three hopper cars are on the ground in Jackson, Georgia. This happened on Thursday, January 12, 2023. That day, strong storms and multiple tornadoes hit north and central Georgia really hard. Now, from what I've been able to gather, these pieces of rolling stock were blown over by high winds. Of course, I'll be following up on this and letting you know the official cause once it's posted on the FRA's website. I shot this video on Sunday, January 15th. The derailed cars, along with their wheels and trucks, have been moved back from the tracks to allow trains to safely pass. There's no doubt, the weather the day these things came off the tracks was intense. This nearby warehouse had parts of its roof ripped off. You can even see some of the debris across the street. Luckily, there was no damage in my neighborhood after those storms, but some of the folks down here are having to rebuild their lives. Let's keep them in our thoughts. Fortunately, the bad weather was long gone now, and it was a beautiful day to watch trains. The Norfolk Southern tracks here run from Atlanta to Macon, Georgia, and this is ex-Southern Railway territory. The second train I saw today would end up coming to a relatively quick stop right in front of me. This was Norfolk Southern train 346, which was going from Inman Yard in Atlanta to Macon. One notable piece of equipment on this train was this ex Amtrak boxcar. It's now labeled for railcar leasing company CarMath Inc. So why did this train have to stop? Well, another train on down the line, NS291, was trying to fix an issue with their train. Yeah, 291, looks like when you passed your detector there in Shooter, we had some trending wheel heats. It's going to be a line 15, and we've got temperatures over 600 degrees, so we're going to need to uh, stop and inspect that as soon as safe to do so. NS-291 originates near Savannah and ends its journey just outside Atlanta in Austell, Georgia. They would eventually work things out, so I changed locations and saw a surprise on the horizon. Even from a distance, you can tell this is not going to be something painted in Norfolk Southern standard black and white. No, this is NS-1072, the Illinois Terminal Heritage Unit. Not my favorite color scheme, but I guess it does resemble a famous superhero. But you're the Incredible Hulk today? I ain't Incredible enough. <laughs> today, the Incredible Hulk, also known by rail fans as the Glow Worm, was leading NS Train 366, which goes from Macon to Chattanooga, Tennessee. And here they are, pulling into the siding in Jenkinsburg. They'd have to wait on this southbound. NS Jenkinsburg. Southbound. I love the enthusiasm from the engineer. Not long after that meet, 366 was on the move again. This was a nice straightaway in Jenkinsburg that a fellow rail fan helped me find. Unfortunately, 366 would not be rolling for long. They'd have to stop again about 10 miles northwest of here in McDonough. Can you just give me a heads up? We'll be holding up at McDonough for a minute. Uh, I'm having switch trouble around here. Can't get it to lock up for your move. 
As I made my way to where 366 would be stopping, it looked like Norfolk Southern was in the process of constructing a new siding. I'll have to keep an eye on this project. When I got to McDonough, the train crew was investigating the switch in question. While 366 has stopped, you can see they've got a pretty cool load behind the lead engines. The orange car here is hauling a panel switch, basically a pre-assembled turnout. At this point, I decided to end my chase of the Illinois Terminal Heritage Unit and head back north to Atlanta. But before we move on, I'm sure some of you are wondering about the original Illinois Terminal Railroad. Well, it was originally called the Illinois Traction System and started in the 1890s. It would become the Illinois Terminal Railroad Company in 1937. These great historic photographs by Roger Puda show us what the railroad's early diesels looked like during the day and at night. According to a special issue of Trains Magazine, the Illinois Terminal used different shades of green as the years went on. That magazine article also says that when it was designing the Heritage Unit paint scheme, Norfolk Southern went with a green present on Illinois Terminal's SD39s. Now, Norfolk Southern predecessor Norfolk and Western bought the Illinois Terminal in 1981, and NS unveiled 1072 in June of 2012 as part of its 30th anniversary. It's one of 20 Norfolk Southern Heritage Units. Okay, speaking of Norfolk Southern history, as I headed home, I encountered a diesel that was once in Southern Railway paint. In fact, you can see some of those Southern decals showing through its current black and white scheme. This EMD GP38-2, built in 1977, was switching cars hauling scrap metal in East Point, Georgia. Let's hope this locomotive doesn't become scrap metal anytime soon. Now, I'm not going into detail about this engine today, but expect a full video soon. I've got plenty of footage and information to share with you. That old high hood would eventually make its way back to Industry Yard in East Point, and that's where I barely caught this CSX train headed south. CSX has trackage rights here. We'll end this Sunday of rail fanning with a non-revenue train. This one hauls and dumps ballast on the railroad. Railroad contractor Herzog has trains like this all over North America. And these are not your average hopper cars. Some Herzog ballast trains use computers and GPS to accurately dump ballast right where it's needed. The doors underneath the cars can be automatically opened and closed to avoid unloading ballast on things like grade crossings and bridges. And those doors are hydraulically operated with an electrical system that runs off solar power. Look closely and you'll see solar panels on these cars. Unfortunately, they weren't spreading ballast today. Okay, since we're on the topic of specialized trains, I've got a little bonus content for you guys. What I caught the next day was not hauling ballast, no, it was pulling a long line of Bradley fighting vehicles. This CSX train was sitting in Kirkwood, which is a neighborhood in Atlanta. They were waiting on an empty coal train to pass. Now, just for strategic reasons, I'm not going to say where all these Bradleys were going, but I can say it was a really cool sight seeing so many of them. And here's that empty coal train they were waiting on. After that passed, they were on the move. Here's the train passing through Decatur, Georgia on the old Georgia Railroad. Something was wrong with the lead locomotive's ditch lights. See how they flash together instead of alternating? Anyway, this was definitely an interesting train. Note how some of the flat cars are actually labeled DODX for the U.S. Department of Defense. And some of them were pretty heavy duty. There were several six axle cars here. As I paced the train, I noticed lots of people pulling out their phones to take videos and pictures. It was pretty impressive and a great way to end a long weekend of rail fanning. I actually produced an entire video about how the military uses trains. I'll leave a link below. Anyway, that's it for now. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.